Hello everyone, I'm Saras. This is part of Team Lima. And today we're going to talk to you about a problem. Last year in the UK, there were 264,000 new family law cases. However, in the same time, legal aid has been cut by 40% over the past five years. But what do these numbers actually mean? They mean that someone with little or no legal education can be forced to defend themselves in court. They mean that a single mother, recently divorced, can be forced to have to decide wh whether or not she can fight to win, whether or not she can afford to fight for the right to keep her children. But fundamentally, they mean that the legal system in this country provides justice only for the wealthy. But those weren't my words. Those are the words of the president of the Law Society, and they've been echoed by Baron Buck of the House of Lords and by 4,000 um, barristers who went on strike recently. This was the first time these barristers had ever been on strike in the UK. What's the solution? We created a law bot which would target the earliest stages of the legal process to provide jargon-free information to these people. Rob will now walk you through it. So the first thing we needed in order to implement the law bot was uh, question-answer pairs so that the user could actually get an answer for a question that we trusted. Uh, we scraped these four sites to get these, um, these answers. Uh, they were suggested by our client. They're very well-known um, legal advice sites, mostly charities, and they all have a section, at least, focusing on family law, which is what we focused on. Um, once we scraped these, we also implemented some cleaning with some NAR in order to get rid of phone numbers and addresses and other information that wasn't useful for the user. Um, for the front end of the application, it actually used Facebook's Messenger API so that we had a web server running and we'd get HTTP requests with, that were messages to a Facebook page from users. Uh, we'd then send those questions to the back end. Uh, the back end would find the best answer for a user's question and then we'd send an HTTP request back to Facebook in order to give that user their answer. I'm now going to hand over to Nathan to talk about the neural network. Thanks, Ralph. So um, this is the neural network. I'm going to take a bit of time and just go through the layers. Uh, so first of all, the inputs. We take these uh, question-answer pairs we collected and add a random bad answer. So we end up with three inputs. With these inputs, we take them through glove embeddings. Uh, this is similar to Wurtavec, if you've heard of that. Um, but essentially, we get the word and get a vector meaning. Uh, from here, we do a convolutional activation, um, multiply it by the attention, and then do a final uh, uh, linear output to uh, map this into a feature space. Uh, so that looks like this. Obviously, it's high dimensions. Um, and essentially, this is kind of what we're aiming for. So we have a question vector, and the, the answer is close to it. And uh, this is not what we're aiming for. This would be bad. And we train on this. Uh, the training took about half an hour and once we have that we can then extract a question model and an answer model uh, which take questions as answers and map it into a, a feature space. Um, so we take, if the user asks a question, we take plausible answers and we run through the model and we take the question and get a vector and so we then have questions and answers and we take the question uh, run it through all this, get an answer, and we then present that back to the user. Uh, I'm going to run you through a quick example. Now, the more sceptical people in the audience may be thinking we just picked like a good example. Uh, this is actually, uh, this happened in our final client meeting. Uh, so completely, well, this is what they chose. Uh, so uh, how much will a divorce cost? Uh, this is fairly comfortable for us. A lot of our data is on divorce. Um, you can read the answer. Um, fairly reasonable. Uh, how can I file for a divorce? Now, I probably the model is entirely stateless, but there's enough information here to kind of continue the conversation on, and we kind of do so. And we finally have uh, what is a decree nisi? Now, do you know what a decree nisi is? No, I don't. I don't know what a decree nisi is, <laughs> but luckily, Lawbot knows what a decree nisi is. Uh, so all that's left is for us to say uh, goodbye from us, and. Uh, Goodbye from Lobot. <laughs>